good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, I think. <laughs> Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, a tiny puppy who still doesn't have a cam. And, uh, oh yeah, disembodied hands, Quindy, Justin, and John. Um, yeah, so um, I can't figure out why my powered hub is just, OBS it just refuses. Like, it's just like, uh, no, black, black. Um, and it and it recognizes that they're two different uh, cams, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't doesn't want to read them. So, yeah. Oh, tiny puppy was a dingo yesterday, guys. Yeah, we're in full on dingo mode. You know how it is. The shark teeth when we get over aroused and uh, the howling, <laughs> the howling. <laughs> um, so yeah. So hold on while she's still awake. Let me just uh, click out my. Okay, see if I can get my cam out. There we go. All right. Hey, baby. Can you look up at the people? Hey, pop, 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 pop. There we go. Good girl. There you are. You're on candid camera. Okay, you can go back to sleep now. I love you. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to try to slide this in, but not slide it in all the way so that we can uh, periodically have pup cam. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, and thank you, M. Fontana, for the resub, 35. Yeah, I just don't know, Kernico. Like, I, I mean, it should just, should just power it and make it to a USBs, right? I mean, it's, it's detecting the cameras. OBS is detecting the cameras, but then it's just not, like, actually um, putting the feed through. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Kiki. It's a good thing she's adorable or we would have killed her yesterday. <laughs> So we were trying a little bit more freeform stuff. Uh, and sorry if I'm ripe, wiping my eyes a lot. It's because I'm still, I'm allergic to my pets. I just like acclimate. So I'm still in my acclimation phase. It's not nearly as bad. I was sneezing for the first five days. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so uh, she, uh, she's definitely in the, in the mode where, where the newness has worn off and her real personality is coming out and she's a little demon um, and has shark teeth. Uh, but yeah, so we're doing good. I mean, this isn't my first rodeo and, and I'm using, you know, we have lots of toys around a redirector. Um, she gets, the problem is she gets so excited about David because she doesn't get as much David as she gets me. Right. Because he's like, he's off doing his thing and then he's off at, at work. And, um, so she gets so excited for David. So we, um, this morning, like he got really frustrated with her yesterday. And the, this morning I was like, do some obedience with her because then she's going to be good and you guys can you know, create a structure where you can interact and that works really well. Yay, yay, pro dog trainer. Not really. <laughs> kind of, maybe not professional dog trainer, but I do okay. Uh, so yeah. So we've got a little bit of, uh, oh, of just adjustment. And then she woke me up at like 3.30 last night a.m. Even though she's got like a potty pad and stuff, like I kind of have a little yard built out, but apparently she decided she wanted to go outside. So yeah, I may just switch her to a crate. I've got to train them both. You've got to, like, okay, every good dog trainer, here, I'm going to adjust my cam just a tiny, tiny tad here, but every good dog trainer is going to tell you that half of the battle is training the human, maybe more than half the battle. The dog works really well once you get it up down to a routine. It's the person. Um, so, yeah. So it's, it really is, I mean, kind of getting David into the mode where he understands, uh, you know, how to um, positively reinforce her and how to, how to negatively reinforce her. He still has the habit of like really jerking back if her teeth are out. And that unfortunately is fun. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna make him do more training with her and show him how to do obedience training. And that will give him a happy experience with her and her a happy, more calm experience with him. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. And then she decided she was gonna howl at 5.30 AM because the last time it got me to let her out. Yeah, cause baby puppy. We'll see. She's, uh, her sister was far more manipulative. Vex was far more manipulative. And dogs will do this, though. They will be like, oh, this works. Maybe it'll work again, you know. So, yeah. So, we're, um, I'm in the mode of trying to finish up a lot of things for ReaperCon. And this is one of the models that I want to finish up. So, we are going to finish it today, guys. We just have to do, um, make sure that the wool on the hat is all done. And then I need to look around and essentially assess any parts of it that I feel um, I may be... Uh, yeah, they do, Rufus, exactly. Yeah, puppies learn the long behaviors, wrong behaviors really fast. Yeah, so the second time, I just had to wait her out, right? I'm just like, oh, no, you went out two hours ago, and you haven't had any water, so I know you don't have to pee again. And you know what? You have potty pads. So I was like, no, and I just ignored her through the little, oh, 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 
oh, she's got these tiny little falsetto wolfling howls, you guys. They're so adorable, but they're not adorable at 3 a.m. <laughs> um, and yeah, she's settled down. But before, like, David was out of the room. Like, he was in the guest bedroom at that point. He's just like, I can't, you know, I can't. So, uh, yeah, so it's just learning. Uh, they will, Rufus. I'm using a modified training technique this time. I've always been a traditional crate trainer, exactly. But baby puppies can't hold it for that long. Like, there's definitely, uh, at eight weeks, there's a limit. Five hours, typically. Five to six hours. And that's not all night. Um, so, uh, so we've got a little yard in front of her crate that essentially a, a potty pad is down on. And it's not in her direct sleeping area, so she can use it. And she's been using it just fine, but I don't know that she's just getting... Like, we reward her when she goes outside, and so maybe that's just, you know, clicking over in her puppy brain, and she's like, oh, I need to go outside, which is awesome at night. She's nine weeks today. Um, it's awesome, but it does mean that I'm probably going back to traditional crate training, because if she's going to just wake me up at 3.30 every night, I may as well just get rid of the front yard, just switch her to a bigger crate, and just take her out, right? Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I've, I've raised four, like, really fairly well-behaved dogs at this point um so yeah and this is the same breed she has a lot in common with a couple of my past dogs so yeah oh we're using storm chaser blue of course everybody which we only have one bottle of so you know once it's gone it's gone but we used it on this model because it seemed like a good use um because you know if i don't use it then it, you know in 20 years it's just going to go bad anyway so i may as well use it where is my bleached linen there there it is bleached linen is what we're mixing in to make our highlights on the cloth yeah, she's very, very cute. Now, Shiloh's are, are, are typically adorable at this age, but all puppies are adorable at eight, nine weeks. Come on. That's why you don't kill them. <laughs> it's just like babies, right? <laughs> Although I think puppies are cuter than babies. That's just me. You can, you can, you know, fight me on that if you wish. Yeah, no, she's a, sh okay, this puppy is smart as a freaking whip, and that's why we have to be careful, right? Because as Rufus pointed out, they can learn the wrong behavior just as easily as the right behavior, and their little brains are sponges at this age. Like, foundational training is a necessity, and so, so yeah, so it's, uh, she is super smart, super, super smart. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, she's really good about that. She's, um because she's a herding breed, she really wants to be with us and so i haven't had actually have not had a problem with her um kind of pushing it and wanting to stay outside i can always entice her with something um and she usually will just follow me usually i play chase i'm like i'm gonna run and then i run back inside and she r runs with me so she, that's a fun game and then she gets a treat for coming inside um so i'm essentially yes and i'm trying to head that off at the pass <laughs> i am uh like all my old puppy habits are coming back so that's cool like, the fact that I've got my uh-uh and nope, you know, and they're on autopilot. Like, the minute she does something I don't like, I'm like, uh-uh, nope, you know. So, she's she's pretty good. She's pretty good. She gets really riled up with a lot of physicality. So, like, you can't, we can't play tug with her. Like, we were playing a lot of tug with her, but she would just go over it. Like, there's definitely a threshold, an arousal threshold there. So, now we're scaling back on the tug so that we get less of a dingo puppy. Oh, yeah, Corgi Healer. Yep, that's a good mix. That's a good mix. The other one I've, I've, uh, I, that I think is a nice mix is the Australian Shepherd uh, Healer. Yeah, okay, so you get it. Yeah, I love herding dogs, too. I'm like, they're just so people-oriented, and it, it makes it a lot easier to train that kind of, you know, whereas a hound will get totally stuck in their nose, and they're just going to stay in the yard. You just got to go, come on, you know. I grew up with uh, Shelties and German Short-Haired Pointers, and the GSP was definitely much more caught up in her nose and the... Um, everything but the Sheltie was really visual and actually the pointer did better in obedience because she didn't think as much and so she didn't overthink it she's just oh I get treat and praise for sitting okay I'm gonna sit heck yeah she was just into it which was funny the smarter the smarter dog was more terrible at obedience because he would see a little kid with popcorn this is a true story by the way at state at state obedience for 4-H for the dog project Fergie saw a little kid with a, a popcorn at the side of the ring, and he decided, you know what? I'm off leash. She can't correct me. I've learned this. Bye, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does, right? Because the way the acronoplastic um, short-legged jeans work is that you get an in-between stage. 
Uh, when you breed a dog that is a chondroplastic, like a corgi, and you breed them to a, a dog with, with quote unquote normal long legs, you always get it a middle, a middle one. So you get that corgi cosplay thing. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we love, uh, we love dogs and cats here, Rufus, so you're in, a, you're in good company. So I'm mixing up um, a succession, essentially my own triad. This is uh, my Storm Chaser Blue, just because I want to be able to correct if I over-highlight uh, with a stippling. And then I've got my first highlight, which is a 3 to 1 uh, Storm Chaser to uh, the bleached linen. I use the bleached linen when I'm using more muted colors and I want a softer effect because it has a little bit of yellow and brown in it um, that will mute out things. I don't want this to necessarily be a real bright highlight. I want to keep that kind of soft navy look to it. So here I've got, I'm going to invert that. I'm going to do three drops of bleached linen with one drop, one big drop of Storm Chaser. And I'm going to mix that up. Yeah, the jeans are really cool on that. The we'll pop we're actually going to pop three drops of water in that because we've got so much white in there bleached linen has a very heavy load of white pigment so you have to add more water to get it to thin down uh, if you're trying to do any sort of blended effect i don't want these little um, stipples to show up hugely so i think i'm going to also mix a little bit in that in there i want this to be a real transition where i can see differences i think this is a pretty good transition here you can see a definite jump and a definite jump so that's a good triad right there Sometimes if you're not very good at blending yet, you may want to also do a mix that's kind of turn it into a pen tab. That's what I tell people is make a mix of these for your first blending, then go up to that, then make a mix of these, then go up to that. Um, if you thin your paint and you're good at brush control, you know, you're good at paint consistency, you can thin your paint to the point where you can just use the triad um, and still get good blending. Oh, good rock, oh, old Rockcliffe stuff. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Rockcliffe. Uh-oh, I left my glasses in the other room, so I'm going to go fetch those guys. Otherwise, I can't see. That's not very nice. Hey guys, guess what I just got? As I got up to get my glasses, I went to the door because I heard a knock and I thought Amazon had come. And it wasn't Amazon, it was ReaperCon swag boxes. Ooh. Shall we do an unboxing? Should we do an unboxing, Kim Quindy? I can totally do an unboxing. We should probably paint a little bit, but everybody's all into it now. <laughs> All right, let's do an unboxing. Let's take, my paint will stay good for a little bit. Yes, my paint will stay good for a little bit. So I got sent these because I'm going to be doing, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I'm going to be doing the opening stream of ReaperCon. Um, Quindy, I did get Justin to adjust the time. So it'll be 8.30 a.m. my time, a little bit better than 8. <laughs> and I think we can do 8.30. And um, it'll be uh, 10.30, you guys' time if you're at ReaperCon, USA Central time. So I will be opening the con, we'll be doing a 10.30 to 12.30 stream, and I'm going to pick some model from in this, these boxes. I've got both boxes, by the way. Uh, so let's get out our knife and do it. Little did you guys know that you, not only would you get a cute puppy looking at you this morning, but you would get unboxing of ReaperCon swag. Let us, let's do the small box first. But yeah, I, um, I want to paint something, obviously, from the ReaperCon. And Ron said the only thing he's got painted from this is the Sophie. So, oh, yeah, another Pe Reaper water cup. Oh, I've got a mouseling. Oh, I'm already seeing cool stuff. Oh, oh, and it's another mini. Oh, a mini holder with a cork on it. Oh, hey, it's another game. MV mini. These are nice anyway, the game MV mini holders. And I think I, I packed mine and then never found it again. So now I have a replacement. Yay. So we'll put something on that. So that's great. We'll put that over there. Ooh, stickers. Oh, I was hoping Reaper would start doing stickers. We have stickers of the houses. I've got a raven. I've got a demon. I've got a, a, a Mr. Bones. Or is that Ms. Bones? That's, Ms. That's Mr. Bones. <laughs> Can I let the puppy pick? The puppy will eat everything, Thundrake, at this age. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got, of course, a Reaper, a Reaper pen, which is good because I like the ballpoints. Wait, is it blue or black? 
It's black, I think. Yeah, I think so. Good, good, good. And of course, we've got our, our little Reaper U. Um, oh, it's got a little pocket on it this time. It's got a pocket. That's cool to hold stuff. That's good because then when you, if you do like I do and you do swatch cards where you use those little like pieces of watercolor paper to do swatches, you can put your swatches in here from your class. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and then of course we've got I've got I've got more Reaper gift certificate. Of course, of course. All right, let's get to the minis. Oh, and the paint. Of course, the paint. All righty. So this is the again. This is the small box. I've also got the big box. So let me get uh, let me get this. Oh, this is the Barrow Gate. I see. The big box is the Barrow Gate uh, ReaperCon 2022 collector's box. Got it. Um, oh, good. We're back to friends. Don't let friends drink paint water. Please paint responsibly. Always love that one. Oh, we got Steenot. Hey, cool. I'm doing the unboxing of, uh, I just got my ReaperCon swag boxes in the mail because I'm going to be uh, choosing a model to paint. Um, so, all right, cool. So we've got some, uh, the paint is, that's going to be good for like a Tiffling skin. You could even use this as a base for like vampire skin if you wanted to. Yes, thank you for the big raid, Steenot. Hi, everybody. I'm Anne. I work for Reaper. Um, we are painting a bust, but then I, uh, I went to get my glasses and Amazon or uh, UPS had brought my ReaperCon swag. So this is a good like sickly lichen, or I would use this for like necromancers. I like to use like sickly olive greens for necromancers, usually with dark blues and purples. Um, I just think it's a really good, especially kind of plaguey feeling, you know, like zombies. Um, I like that color. So yeah. And then we've got this really cool cold. This is good. Guys, this this blue gray, gray blue, whatever it is, is right on the line. You know what this would be great for? NMM, steel NMM. You don't even have to mix the blue into the gray anymore. Just use this. Uh, so we've got Westboro slate or something, uh, and then we've got rot stump mud. Yeah, you could use this for a muck. It would be a really gross muck, like baby poop muck. But you could. <laughs> but yes, thank you everybody. So uh, yeah, so then we're looking at. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a henchman, a henchman. Oh, it's a human fighter. It looks like maybe, let's see, he's cool. He's got a torch. That's always great. Oh, I'll totally paint, guys. I think we're going to have to paint this. Do you guys want me to paint this one and use an OSL effect? Do a, do a glowing effect with the torch? He's pretty cool. I bet Rhonda paints him too. Daryl Brumby, human fighter. And he's got some nice chainmail detailing. Pretty simple. Got some cloth. Got a good sword. So that's good for um, teaching basic NMM. Uh, yeah, this is a really good model. We could do some weathering on his leather jerkin. There's some nice detailing on this guy. Yeah, like, I like it. I'm into it. Good job, Reaper. You guys want this? Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Tattoo D Sculptor. I do, I will admit, like, I do paint to a high level, but I, I also regularly encouraged Tat that if you have a basic question, to, like, just what kind of brush do you recommend or whatever, just do. Like, it's cool. Um, just to ask. Like, I like to answer all sorts of questions, and I really enjoy teaching people who are new to the hobby and at the intermediate level where they're trying to get better also. So whatever level you're at, like, feel free, man. Feel free. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's um, I do try to break it down also when I, even when I'm doing a more advanced project, I try to break down, like, kind of the simple stuff. Like, what I'm going to be doing if I finish this model today um, is kind of work talking about Zenith highlighting, like how you Zenith prime on a model. Um, actually, let me get in focus here. I notice my focal point is a little bit less than it needs to be. There, there we go. So we'll work on the kid I mage and getting that. Uh... The bus? No, no, it's not air rushing. It's actually all layering. Yep. I'm actually kind of a, I'm kind of an antique that way. I... I know the basics of airbrushing, but I haven't put in the work to get really comfortable with it. So this is all just um, layering, blending. Yeah, it's hand painted. You quit. Uh, wait, wait, wait. First of all, understand that I have been painting for, if you count from my first mini that as a kid I dipped in the testers and animals, I've been painting for 41 years. If you count from the point where I actually applied myself, that would be... 27 years that was when I was actually trying to get better in college and then if you just count from the point where like I actually got good enough to win a national competition that's uh 20 years so 
Don't judge yourself by my standard, dude. I've been there. I've been in this hobby a long time. Uh, okay. Oh, 30 sculptures. Well, awesome. Yeah, I've been doing... I've been doing... Uh, I've been... See, and, and if, if you saw my attempts at, like, sculpting, you would laugh. <laughs> but, yeah, I love painting. Um, I have for a very long time, and so... So I got, I got really good at it, and then Reaper hired me, and I became their staff painter for a while. Um, I taught classes at ReaperCon. This is my first, ReaperCon is this weekend, and it's the first ReaperCon I'm going to have missed ever since it began, because um, I moved, and now I've got a baby puppy, um, and my baby puppy uh, needs me to be home, so I sent my fiancé to the con instead. Uh, but yeah. Cool, thanks. Yeah, the sculpt is done by uh, Jean Van Horn. And then the paint job by myself. But yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that though, Lady Kachara. Like, I mean, I, I started a new crafting hobby um, this summer, which is like, I started knitting and crocheting. And, and it's, it is the same. I have to remind myself of all the stitches every time, especially if I take a break and like, don't do it for a week. Like it's, it is, it's like baby stuff. So I totally feel it. I totally feel it. Uh, yes, and I showed, I'm not going to wake her up again, but I can give a brief puppy cam. Hold on, let me, I, I left my camera kind of unattached, I hope, so that I can get it out. Hold on, we'll focus on Pupster. She's sleeping. She's being a very good girl right now. Oh, there we go. Oh, she's twitching. <laughs> she's integrating all the little, uh, all the little things we learned this morning. She's a bit of a good girl. She's she's a lot of work because she's only she's nine weeks old today. I'm gonna weigh her later to see how see how heavy she is. Let me get my I always have to adjust my face cam just a little bit when I put it back. But yeah, so yeah, she's this is good though. Like the the one thing that we do have down is during my stream time from 9:30 on, she crashes. So we're pretty good doing like an hour and a half to two hour-ish uh, stream, yeah. Uh, Polly, we got Keyleth. Um, we're keeping the name Keyleth and we're calling her Kiki, just like the character in Critical Role that she is named after. Um, so uh, Kiki's a cute name and she really, it, it fits her. She is kind of a ditz. <laughs> I got her, it was official. I got her dog tag engraved this weekend, so. But yes, Keyleth. Technically it's Leth, L-E-T-H, but Kiki, K-I-K-I -I is what she answers to. Um, so, okay. Oh, there's lots of torches and OSL effects, guys, this uh, ReaperCon. So we're unboxing my ReaperCon boxes. They just came. I got them in advance because I'm going to be doing the opening stream of ReaperCon at 10.30 uh, USA Central Time on Thursday, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. She, she was my breeder's favorite, and she actually cried when I chose her because she had she had hoped that I would take that one. So... She is a sweetheart. She had her, we did some socialization this weekend. We had a local um, street fair and we took her uh, to go and just watch things. She's adorable. Yeah, um, I'm gonna do a Patreon post uh, later on today with some pictures of her. I'll probably make it a public post so you all can go see it. It's patreon.com slash painting big. Um, and I'll just make it a public post. That way, if you're not a patron, you can still see the cute puppy pictures, all right? That's on my to-do list today. Yeah, the mouse thing is adorable. He's a, uh, he's serious, man. He's got a snarl on his face. We'll probably paint this one too. I haven't painted a muscling on stream. That would be fun. So yeah, there's a lot of models I would paint in this actually. Um, and then the Sophie, the Sophie has her back to us, but you guys have seen Rhonda's uh, version, right? So Sophie, she's got her, uh, she got her, she's turning her back to us. We can see her wings and this is a nice sculpt. Man, everything done in Bones USA in this uh, Siocast material is just fantastic. Fantastic. Petting big. <laughs> no, no, no. If I do another Patreon, it'll have to be for the writing. I don't need three. I don't need a dog Patreon, too. So here, let's get her out of her. Uh... So she's cute. She's really cute. So she's got her, her thumbs hooked through her belt. And uh, she's she's just got a cute... I like her armor. Got her, her sword and her dagger. And then, of course, you could just uh, putty in the holes if you wanted her not to be a succubus. But, of course, Sophie is our mascot, and she is a succubus. So if you just want her to be a female elven fighter, you could do it that way by filling in those holes really easily. Just a couple blobs of green stuff, really. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then you've got the beautiful wings, of course. Writing big. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, Rhonda's version of the Sophie is very, very good. Yes, so that's why that's why Rhonda doesn't need me to paint this one. I'm going to pop her back in her blister. So, okay, so that is the entirety of the first swipe box. Let's break open the second one and see what we've got um, that's different in this one. So this is the Barrowgate ReaperCon collector's box. It is, as you can see, quite large. The pupper is like, you keep waking me up by moving big boxes around. Alrighty, what we got? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, there's a dragon bust in here, guys. Everybody's like, please paint it. Please paint that. Okay, so this is definitely, definitely going to be... Okay, and we've also got a big, big paint cup. That's cool. Let's go with our short paint cup. Um, and we've got that. Dragon Bust. Dragon Bust is probably the uh, the only thing you would get me to paint, like, a Draconic on the stream at full full set. Oh, okay. So the swag box is to go up September 6th at the earliest, and the figures should go up for individual sale at some point after. Yeah. So, okay. So this is a ReaperCon special. Um, you will hypothetically, yes, be able to... Uh, yeah, this is a fierce-looking dragon, Julie. Good job. I'm going to totally not do Michael's paint job on it. I'll have to, like, think about what he is. Like, Julie, do you have a, a color scheme that you uh, really wanted to see on him? I know you're in the chat. I hope you're in the chat. You were in the, or the sculptor was in the chat uh, uh, earlier in the stream, guys. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I get it, Kernico. I'm not, I'm having to skip um, my dog, uh, national dog show for my breed is uh, actually at the beginning of October, and I was originally planning on going, but... Getting the puppy was so expensive with the rental car and the hotel for like four days and the, you know, and then like getting out there in the first place and all the supplies. No, just form. No color that you'd like to see. Him. He, is it a him or a her? Give me that. Looks like a him. Sorry, I have to open this one, guys. It's got to be opened. We cannot just leave it in this box. Still working on seeing colors. That's okay. Like color is the first thing I think of. But that's because I'm a painter, right? So it makes sense to me that you wouldn't necessarily go there first. I did get a puppy, yeah. But the puppy was super pricey. Oh, I like the stone texture on the base. I like that the plinth isn't just a generic plinth. I always like it when busts are done and the plinth isn't generic. It kind of fits the character of the model. So yeah, so then you've got your connection point down here. And that's nice too, because then you can just fit your dragon right into the bust. Oh, this is very fierce. I like the fierceness. Oh, I like the fierceness. Like, there's a bit that we have to take off there that was part of the molding. Yeah, it's a very big bust here. You can see that. You can see it threatening the um, the storm chaser bust. So yeah, do you guys want me to paint this one? That's a stupid question. Stupid question. I could probably manage to paint this without losing my mind. Yeah, he's mean looking for sure. He's got his lower jaw here in a baggie. I'll just keep that in there so I don't lose it because you know me. Yeah, so he's he's roaring, he's roaring. So yeah, we could paint this. Okay, so anything resin like the Dragon Bust would not expect to to go to general release. They will only sell off leftovers, although they may re-release it in a different material at a later date. Yes, yes. So um, so yeah, I like this dragon. I have to get that mold line off of there. Um, but yeah, I think that, and I like the big eyes, because then we can do some really cool um, reptilian eyes on him. Uh, but yeah, I like this. I like this. And then we've got some, I like Julie too, what I really like. I like it, I love it when sculptors do this. When you've got a different texture of scales, like here and here and here. I love that because then you can switch up the colors as the painter, because you can see that it's maybe a different material or just a different part. Um, and I really love that. I love that. No, I like to commit. I like to commit, Pendrake. This is a, even though this is big, the scales are large, and I, I bet we could do this pretty, this would be faster probably than the Storm Chaser bust. Um, but yeah, we if they're going to re-release them, they'd probably re-release them in a Bones material, maybe for Bones 6 Kickstarter. I'd like to see that. I would like to see some of these busts that are limited get re-released as Bones material in the, um, in the Kickstarter, future Kickstarter. So yeah, this is a cool dragon. I really like it. It's fantastic. 
I am going to put him back before I sit and drool on him a little bit too much. Yeah, he is neat. He has that more, yeah, the snout, right? The snout looks more like an eastern dragon. I agree, Kerniko. I was thinking there's something about this. Oh my gosh, so many minis, guys. Um, oh, and there's a patch. Oh, there's a green griffin patch, guys. Green griffin patch. That's cool. I might have to add that to one of my con bags. Oh, the exemplar wet palette. Whoa, guys, this box is good. I was not expecting a wet palette. This is cool. Now I can, I've been using my wet palette more often, actually, in my own painting, you guys. So maybe we'll do another wet palette mini. What do you guys think about that? Maybe we'll do it on the dragon. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is pretty awesome. Oh, and it's got the white sponge. Very cool. Oh, and it's got a device stand in the lid, guys. You can put your phone up there. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm so excited. I hadn't looked at these because, you know, I don't shop for wet palettes on a regular basis. But if you can see, let's see. Oh, oh there we go. You see? Yeah, see? You can actually put your phone on the back. And then you've got your reference photo. No, David is not getting this palette. Neat. Neat. Okay, so I'm super thrilled already with what I got. Super thrilled, people. All right, what's next? What's next? There's more. There's more. I'm going to put this back in here. I'm going to tell David he'll have to get his own. <laughs> ah. Let's see here. Okay, so we're going to have... Oh, wow. Oh. Interesting. So it looks like almost... um. What are those knights from uh, kind of Flemish knights? But this guy's cool. He's got a... Uh, a boar helmet and a big two-handed sword you guys know like what i'm talking about right historically there were like the big swihander like two-handed swords i can't remember what the knights were called but yeah that's a really cool character neato fritos that's cool all right let's um let's go to the next one what do we got what do we got what do you got oh another oh evil guy we've got an evil guy Thorn forged, some sort of like maybe evil. You could paint him like a green knight, maybe, or you could paint him more chaosy. But he looks neat. He he's got some nice texture on him too. So he's a good evil one. Landschnecht. Thank you, Shadow Raven. That's exactly what I was looking at. He looks like a fantasy Landschnecht. <laughs> Ooh, uh oh, uh oh, another one. This one we're okay. These guys are questionable, but this one we're painting. She's so pretty. Oh, she's so pretty. I'm I'm in love. What a beautiful sculpt. I love the elegant like movement and just the good pose and like the little um sensor there. She's part of the Ghostwalkers faction. Whatever that means. It looks like she might have a spirit lantern or something. Yeah, she is super lovely. Okay, she's on the top of my list. Man, I'm getting so many models out of these boxes that I want to paint for you guys. Who am I going to start with? Oof. Oh my gosh, it's the dragon head pokey tool. Du -du -du. Yeah, it, this is a great swag box. Like, have a garage sale. Sell some stuff and buy the swag box, guys. Dragon Bust, Mouseling, and then the Dragon Head Pokey Tool. Paintable, of course. You'll want to seal it with a heavy gloss sealer and then do a, like a dull, dull spray over it, though, um, just to make sure that, if you do paint it, I mean, uh, to make sure that it doesn't rub off. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet, Big, a Big Apple. I'm slowly, un I just got my boxes today and I'm unboxing. Oh, oh, we've got a new brush holder. It's the one with the, the drawbridge. That's cool. That's going to be cool. Neat. Okay, cool. I have my, my other brush holders right up here. It actually does hold brushes on my desk. So that's brush holder number two. I'm going to have to let David look at all this and he's going to be like, Wah. he's going to want it. He's going to want some of this stuff. But I'm going to be like, no, mine. Mine. Okay, so the bone panders. You like this one better, huh? With the book. She's got a nice face. So that's this lady. She's also got a nice book. Bonnie's just, 
Bobby is outdoing himself, guys, these days. Like, these are just beautiful little models. I like the skull. We'll paint her, too. We'll paint it all. All of it. But I think I like the Ghost Walker Lady a little better. But I'm, I am partial to elves, so... Yeah, so this is pretty awesome. So yes, for those who are on limited budgets, um, look in your garage at what you can sell on eBay and uh, get those auctions up because this is cool. Oh, and we've got some. Oh, we've got art cards, guys. So we've got the original art for the characters, and there are several in this sleeve, several cards. So that's a nice touch. It's always nice to get Talon art, and then we've got a Gandalf because you know what. Ron loves... Did you guys know that Ron loves Gandalf wizards? Like, if you ever wondered why Reaper has so many Gandalf wizards in its lines, Ron Hawkins. Two words. That's it. Oh, did Max Dunbar do all those? Wow. Thanks, Quindy. Yeah, they look They look a lot like Izzy's work. Great job. Yeah, so we've got the wizard stroking his beard with his little bird on there. You could. Do, I guess you could be a Radagast, maybe, because animal, right? But yes, Ron loves pointy hat wizards. Never, ever believe him if he tells you he doesn't. That's why we have so many of these. But yeah, we can paint this guy like a forest wizard because I like the bird on the staff. You guys see the bird? It would be kind of nice to do a wizard that was more um, more rural, more more wild. That would be kind of fun. Oh, is he? Or is she, rather? I didn't know that Talon was stepping away. Yeah, well, that's fair. Yeah, I haven't seen Izzy for a while. So, that's that's cool. At least, well, Max looks like he's a great artist, so that's fantastic. And if it helps Izzy's uh, mental, then all good. All good, right? Sometimes you need a break. Yeah, Forest Wizard. That's what I was thinking with Twisted Oma. Just do something different, right? We haven't ever done that. Um, but you totally could have a wizard who specialized in a nature school of magic, right? When he had him bald. I always like the young mages, and we just don't have too many of them. Like, we have young female wizards, but we have very few young male wizards. I always complained at Ron. The only reason we have any young male wizards, you guys, is me complaining at Ron, by the way. All right, so he's pretty cool. For a pointy hat wizard, I like his pose, and we can do something different with him. Uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, my gosh. So much stuff. Totally telling David he's not getting the wet palette. It's mine. Uh, okay, we've got a box. Oh, it's the super washes. I haven't actually used these. This is this is part of why I was looking forward uh, to getting some of these so that I could see how they did them. Because, you know, I can figure it out. So we've got our super washes, guys. Did Rhonda do a preview on these? I think she did, right? Hi, Corsair. I just got my ReaperCon swag boxes, so we've been doing a total unboxing. Um, we've got like Drow Violet, Leather Brown. Yeah, these look like they're a useful uh, range of washes. I'll have to do some uh, experiments. Rhonda did hers Monday. Were they cool? They look like they're a good selection of colors. And they've definitely got like they've got a couple of good core browns. And the magenta and uh, there's a bright green and a darker green. It's cool, and I just got my ReaperCon uh, swag boxes in the mail, like just. So I decided to stop painting and do an, do an unboxing instead. But based on this, I'm so excited. There are so many models in here that we are totally going to paint. Like totally going to paint, totally. Totally going to paint, yes, going to paint, absolutely going to paint. Um, so yeah, so there's lots, there's lots, lots of stuff. I'm not certain how they're positioned. I would, I would think so. I would think that that's what the super washes are, but you may want to go and watch Rhonda's last show, um, last Monday's show, not today, but last Monday, I believe she did a preview of it is what they were just saying in chat. So there we go, guys. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, I put the mouse in the wrong place. Yeah. Um, this is the separate purchase box. This is the, I, I, I unboxed the the main box, the little box, but then this is the big, um, what do they call it? The Barrowgate uh, Collector's Box. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of true, Big Apple. I mean, it's, it's not like you can't mix your own washes if you want to do a heavy wash speed paint over Zenith, right? Like, you can do it. 
it's totally doable. I do it a lot if I'm speed painting, but these take some of the effort out. Some of the colors look really nice too. So I think what I'll do, um, cause some, some washes are harder to mix and that dark magenta looks really useful. So I think I'm gonna um, play with them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the boxes should be on the website after ReaperCon. Oh, thank you, Quindy. So there's Rhonda's stream where she covers the super washes and talks about kind of what they're for and like runs them kind of through their, pace, her, their paces. So go and, uh, and, and watch a bit of that to get a better idea. Because since I haven't used them at all, I haven't, um, oh boy, this is going to be totally puppy. The puppy is going to pounce on these the second, the second <laughs> that she comes out of her crate. She's going to pounce on these boxes and grab everything. Um, but there's nothing to be done about it, pupper. I'll have to move them in a little bit. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry. She, she raised her head. She's like, ooh, can I eat that? Good girl. Good girl. Oh, I've got a pop bubble. I'm actually keeping... Ugh keeping bubbles so that I can pop them later and give her treats. Oh, you'll be there at the con all weekend. Awesome. Actually, I think I'm going to move these boxes over. Over here, so a little bit out of puppy reach. Just a little. That's a little harder. All right. Keyleth Gibson, we got the Sable Girl. She is asleep right now with their little paws stretched out. But here, let me show you guys. I'm gonna be putting up some pictures on the um, the Patreon later, and I'll make it a pub public post so everybody can see it. But let me find the cute. There's a couple that are the cutest. Where's the leaf one? Yeah, this, so this was the one that, that David took of her hiding under the chair. So that's Keyleth, Kiki. Kiki for short. I got a chihuahua, funny Corsair. Um, and then, then her, her being big, big face, tiny paws, being very alert because I'm holding a treat. Treats are awesome, by the way, just in case you didn't know. Yeah, she's got the most expressive eyes. And then this is her being cute with the leaf. I love this photo. She does. She has a really beautiful face. Really, She'll probably keep a lot of that dark coloring, too. Um, you can kind of tell with our pups, with this breed, if they've got, if they, if they have a dark face, but their paws are light, then you'll probably lose the dark. But she's got really dark tips. She, what we call, we call these tiger toes. She's got tiger toes. So she's probably gonna keep the dark face as she gets older. She's also got um, a really dark belly. So yeah, she'll, as she gets her adult coat in, you'll see this black color start to spread. Um, and she should end up quite a dark sable. Her ears are actually pretty small. If you look at them, they're little. It's the big floof gets a kind of like throws you off, but these are, they may stand up. They may stand up. Yeah. She's really soft too. Like, like the coat is like just cotton softness. Like it's really, really soft. So yeah, so there's, there's my Kiki, um, the Keekster, the Kikaruni. Oh, and there's a better face picture. David got this one yesterday. Good lighting. So she got dark eyes. And a dingo face, yeah. With and don't be they're needle teeth, needle teeth that are right under there that you're not seeing. And I've got I've got a scar. This is like the first puppy I've actually gotten a big scar from. Um, but she got very excited. And then she's got her, her official name tag is in this picture. We got her shiny one, yeah. But she is definitely work at this age. They are definitely work. So. I have, I have very few brain cells, and I haven't had any time to get the pup cam going. It's, um, it doesn't want to work, and so I'm not sure how we're going to make the pup cam work or if I'm just going to do whatever. You'd snuggle her for two seconds, then she'd get super excited about being snuggled, and then you would be like, eek, teeth, <laughs> Gibson. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of redirecting with toys. Whenever she gets excited and she wants to nibble on people. Because, you know, she grew up with seven siblings, well, six siblings and then a, um, an adopted sibling. So puppies play with their mouths and it takes time. However, I have an appointment. I'm actually pretty excited about this. So there's there's a place in da uh, in Fort Worth that I used to know called the Zoom Room. And they're, uh, they're a franchise um, training facility. And I didn't realize that, but there's one only 20 minutes from us out here in California. And that's actually closer than the one in Fort Worth had been. So I signed up for their orientation, and I think Kiki and I are going to start doing classes at the Zoom room. They have a puppy uh, preschool, 
uh, which she can start going to right now. Yeah, less stress. It's true. And more sleep, Georgian. More sleep. Um, but yeah, they've got puppy preschool, and then they've got puppy uh, manners class, and then you can graduate into obedience. Um, she's got a little tip. She might be a half elf. I don't know. That's they're not really pointy, but they are kind of pointy. I don't know. I don't know what she is. So what we're doing is um, the stippling here. So I just wanted to do a little bit of a lighter stipple. And since we've already done a lot of stippling here for the um, coming up to these highlights, you just have to add a little bit to get an extra light. I've got a nice kind of felted texture going on here, so I'm pretty happy about that. I've thinned this paint um, almost one-to-one -one with this highlight color so that I can get... Uh, so that my dots aren't really bold, I can kind of blend them in. They're still fairly bold, but I can just put a few, you can see that, bringing that highlight up. Yes, that's exactly it, Gibson. Yeah, so I'm, of course, starting at square zero since she's just turned nine weeks today. So uh, we're still working on it, but she's very, she loves training. She loves to do obedience and to do the sit and the down, and we're teaching her touch, and I'm teaching her stand. And I just started teaching her up, up this morning to get on her puppy bed, her platform outside. Uh, so that's a useful one to have. And we were, we're teaching touch to the hand. And I'm also teaching her her really basic baby recall. So I'm going to start working on basic leave it training, foundational leave it training uh, next. But she's brilliant and she just wants to keep going. Like she does not, a lot of puppies, you're, you're good if you can do like four or five like clicks and treats in a row. But Kiki want, wants to keep doing stuff. Like I'm gonna do a little bit of a extra highlight here on the edges up at the top here too, just to bring up that collar a little bit more. But yeah, so she's smart as a whip, this little one. She catches on quick. Her attention span is, you know, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. But uh, her brain, her brain is huge. And uh, she loves to learn. So, I mean, the, the training facility, Zoom Room, also does a, a agility classes. So for the first time, maybe, yeah, for the first time, maybe I'll actually try to take a dog in agility. I think Blazy could have done it, but at that point I, I had like you know, I had four Shilohs at that point. I was just didn't have the time to go and haul Blazy down for agility training. But now I only have one pup, and so it's much more easy to make um, make training time. So yeah, I'm super excited to have uh, the opportunity to to have a good trainer. They're all positive, um, which is nice. That's what I'm trying to do with Keeks. Keeks is Keeks for short. All right, just gonna kind of get some, uh, I'm gonna get a kind of a, a base coat here. I had a little bit of rub off, so. But yeah, definitely like, definitely uh, the puppy is definitely work. She's, uh, we're still trying to kind of fine tune because you know, every puppy is different, right? So some puppies, X and Y work, some puppies Z works, some puppies like, I want Q. J. So every puppy is their own individual. So we're still kind of working on what's going to be the best way to housebreak her. What's uh, one thing we discovered, for example, is we, we gave her a lot of freedom because we, uh, we were able to watch her a lot over the weekend. But that was actually a mistake because she doesn't sleep very well when she's, um, when she's out. Because if we move around, she'll actually wake up and try to follow us. So what I've actually discovered just like at the end of yesterday and early today is that crating her is actually a good thing because she will settle down and sleep. And otherwise she doesn't get enough sleep, but we get super crabby puppy, so similar to overtired, overtired child, you know, definitely not fun. Lots of dingo and lots of snapping shark teeth. Yeah, agility is, um, you know, I, I, it's both, um, yeah, the mindset and the drive, right, to do the agility. And also you need to have good structure because a lot of the stuff that dogs are doing in agility is really hard on their body. So um, you want a dog that's got got good physical structure, sound structures. It uh, reduces the risk of uh, injury. A lot of people don't realize that, but that's kind of like 
like good confirmation like dog shows it isn't just a beauty pageant like you're actually looking at things like shoulder arrangement and, and the feet um structure and you're assessing stuff like if you've got a flat-footed dog i wouldn't no you never want to do running with a dog like that you know and if you've got a dog with a really straight shoulder that means they've got less shock absorption on their front so doing a lot of jumping like fly ball right out like i would never do that you've got a high risk of injuring your dog as they get older especially so um important to realize that that structure is a thing and so with kiki we'll see i'll kind of assess her when she's a little bit older and I also with her i need to wait until the growth plates close and you know all that kind of thing because large breeds mature a lot slower oh for missiles yep so I'm just doing a bit of the stippling in here, kind of bringing it in where, where there's light. She's trying to burrow underneath the blanket. This is super funny. Um, and I'm going to get the edge especially because the edge on felted fabrics, the edge is going to get worn. I mean, think about corduroy, if you guys are familiar with that horrible relic of the 60s and 70s. Um, but essentially, wherever the edge is is where it wears the most. Trying to burrow under the blanket. This is so funny. She's a funny dog because she really likes to be cold. Like she does, she hates the hot weather. We're getting a lot of hot weather right now. Um, but then sometimes when she's got a blanket in her crate, she just tries to burrow underneath it. Oh, I should show you guys. Actually, I've got a picture. So doing the felting on the top there just to bring up some texture. We don't want to bring up the texture all the way up the inside of this because in the shadow you'd never see it. But we do want to bring it in through here. So. Oh, CHD. Yeah, yeah. You can hear her flopping around. It's true. I've got her fan on today, too. Yeah, exactly. Let me see if I've got the cute puppy lump. Where's the puppy lump picture? Oh, here we go. So this was how the puppy, puppy lump started. This is in our TV room. So this is what she's trying to do right now, but I have the blanket folded, so it's harder. So, and then this is how it ended up. <laughs> With the pig ear on top, too. <laughs> so she's a funny little beast. She's a super funny little beast. It'll be good when she's less bitey. But you get a special brand of fun. Much as it's bitey in shark time, you do get a special brand of fun with a puppy. They're just learning the world so, so much. And it's just a joy. Even though you're, like, tearing your hair out, it's still a joy. Cause you get so much so much uh, laughs uh, out of the little babies when they're figuring it all out like yesterday when i put on her dog tag <laughs> she ran around like a total dingo trying to chase it and then trying to run away from it <laughs> because she could see it but she couldn't nom it <laughs> so she ran circles around our living room trying to like trying to, i couldn't tell if she was running away or running to run, trying to chase it the the shiny dog tag it was really funny. She is a silly dingo. Yeah, I think, I mean, you get kind of like with kittens, you get that, um, you know, when they, I call it the hell fur phase, uh, where they're climbing curtains and, you know, you. Um, I've experienced the hell fur phase. And so puppies have that kind of phase too. But I think with kittens, they actually grow out of it faster. Maybe because cats mature faster, because especially with big dogs, um, we see maturity shift a little bit around like eight or nine months, but you really don't see a profound maturity shift till you hit about a year with our breed. At a year, you definitely see a maturity shift in the, in the mind, it's just the way the dog is working with you and um, how they're acting and how they work with their routine. So pretty much, okay, just using a, re a, a recurring stippling mindset, you can see how that makes that soft look. And I'm just using my first highlight here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like she had, um, she had salmon for the first time when I was on the road because I had to give her her uh, car sickness med and she just did not want to take anything else. So I had a poke bowl. So I had an extra chunk of salmon and I, I 
took a little piece of that and wrapped it around her, her pill. And oh my God, like I think her eyes bugged out. I think it blew her mind. So it's good that I actually have a salmon flavored uh, dog food to transition her to. I think she'll like it. So just now a little bit lighter here. And if at any point I feel like I've overdone it, always on top of the curtain rod, feral and crazy. Yep, yep, the, the helfer, helfer, totally helfer. It's like a hell, hell pup, but it's helfer. So I tend to, I tend to say that, that our hell pups are dingoes, wild dogs. All right, so if at any point I feel like I've gone too far, I can grab my original color, the base coat, I want to thin it down just a little bit, so I'm almost glazing. But you can, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you glaze, you can glaze with a pattern. So you can stipple a glaze. And sometimes when you're working with texture, that's exactly what you want to do. So you're still reinforcing the pattern that you're doing. You're just like using it with a glaze. And you're not going to see it as much, but it's going to blend that in. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having my last kitten. Actually, my last kitten was not a helper. He had a very short helper phase, but he was a totally needy cat. That was Mama San's son, Panther. The the 16 pound uh, skinny half Siamese. He was a totally a needy kitty, and he loved his mama. I was his person. Very cat, very dog like cat. So that Siamese can be that way. All right, so, and the faster I do this, the more I'm gonna like kind of risk getting kind of mucky and it not looking right. So it is kind of one of those things you wanna put on an audiobook and just get in your Zen zone and start doing your stippling. I'm gonna actually glaze real, real glaze this time. Let me get some water in here. So I'm gonna thin it down to like colored water. I'm gonna paint it over that, blend it in. So it'll keep the texture, but it'll take down the highlight a little bit. No, I was bringing up corduroy as an example of how things wear, because it's like most people, a lot of people wouldn't have experience with this kind of like rough wool or it's kind of got a, almost a crushed velvet texture. I mean, corduroy is the closest thing that some of us who are older might know. Um, But yeah, these, these hats would be wool. A captain's, admiral's hat or captain's hat. We looked it up, so we are doing the wool. And I definitely wanna get, but you definitely wanna get those edges. Because that's where everything would wear. So I actually ordered, for my puppy, we actually ordered a portable AC unit yesterday. Because I noticed that while David is gone at ReaperCon, it's going to get into the 90s here. And this little poor little fuzzball, she's going to melt. So the uh, portable AC should be good for any of our rooms other than our big main room. So we'll probably have a, we'll have to camp out, I'll have to move her crate. Well, that's funny. Dog like cats are cool. Yeah, I think I like dog like cats better than cat like dogs. All right, so now let's do the inside of it here. The puppy is much grumbly today. Much grumbles. Yeah. She can't decide if she wants to be on the blanket, under the blanket, or between the blanket and the wall. There we go. So we've got that kind of set up. As you can see, it's, yeah. I just know she's going to need something, right? So at least I can bring her in here and do the AC up to the window and, uh, 
we should be able to make it work. Or do our hobby room. Might have to move her crate into the hobby room and do a lot of stuff in there while, while you guys are gone. It'll be ReaperCon anyway, and I'll be watching some of the streamed stuff, so I'll be in the mood to paint. So I may as well just camp it in there. Grumble puffer. So grumble. <laughs> I keep wondering if I should help her just burrow underneath the blanket. <laughs> Want a burrow pop? Hold on, guys. There we go. Yeah, you can burrow. Yeah, I'm gonna just make it bigger. Yeah, you can burrow. There, I made it more burrowable. There we go. I have to accommodate my pupper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I knew that. I saw the temperature, like the 90, supposed to go up to like 93 or something, and that's. Our house will stay at about 80, but that's just too much for this baby. She's not used to that heat, and she does not like it. So this part of the hat is more open to the top. You can see this part of the hat is more toward um, more shaded. Oh, and we got must have gotten a little bit of a blorf there. So let's grab our. This is why we always keep our base color around so that we can touch up blorfs. There we go. So you can see right where the shadow is and then where it starts to come out into the light back here. So we're going to keep this in shadow. You don't really have to uh, do any texture here except on this inner edge right in there. Kiki is part hotted, absolutely. Well, actually we call, this is funny because I was just telling uh, our, our name for when they're, you know, because in the kitchen she will come up and fall onto my foot and just fall asleep. So we call that being part of the underfoot clan, which of course is a hobbit clan. So you have it on the nose, Corsair. We used to call Kiri Kiri Underfoot of the Underfoot clan. And this is definitely uh, Kiki Underfoot, for sure. So yes, being part Hobbit fits with her, uh, her Underfoot clan uh, designation. So yes, I'm just doing the edges of here. Yeah, I'm super excited about all those. For those who came in later on the stream, we got I got my ReaperCon swag boxes today, and uh, I'm so excited about so many of those models. There are some fantastic models in that box. I'm just going to have to wrestle it away from David and say, no, mine. Um, he'll have his chance to buy them at ReaperCon if he really wants them. And he's not getting my wet palette. But I think he likes his wet palette, so I think he's got a Redgrass Games one. So my wet, my wet palette should be uh, safe. <laughs> yeah, she would totally do. She does do second breakfast, actually, so even more. She's a hobbit. She's very big for a hobbit, though. I think she's, uh, she's going to be bigger than hobbits are really permitted to be, but we won't tell her that. Yes, Kiki on foot of the cage blanket drive. <laughs> Yeah, the um, the one in the ReaperCon box is uh, really nice. And I've been using, um, because I, you, you guys know that I do use uh, both Reaper and Scale Color Artist uh, in my own painting. Um, and I've been lately using the Wet Palette more on some of that, practicing my uh, paint consistency with it. Because it is, um, I use it regularly when I need to paint faster. It is really good for that. Hmm, I need to do kind of a mix here. So if your brush isn't coming to a perfect point, like right now I didn't bother to really for make a perfect point, make sure that you're kind of flipping your brush around from side to side so that you're getting different marks, different shape marks. So we bring in this, the texture on the top of the hat. Underfoot clan. <laughs> yes. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my, um, my first highlight here. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more texture than I want. 
if you see that your stipples are really standing out and you want them to blend in better, like I've really got some standing out here, um, drop some more water in, especially if you've been painting for a while. I'm just using my, my Da Vinci. I'm actually using the old Da Vinci uh, because since I'm since I'm stippling anyway, this is the really beat up one and that's fine for stippling. It still holds enough of a point to do uh, decent work, but this is actually a good use for if you have a, a nice brush, but it's really thin. You can see how it's really thinned down and it's really quite beat up. Uh, but stippling is uh, something that your really old brushes that maybe aren't uh, keeping a good enough point for some of the finer work, but they're still like decent. Um, stippling is a good use for those brushes because you're going to be kind of brutalizing the point a little bit. Um, it lets you be okay with that if you do tend to like poke more, more I'm using the side of my tip, but if you do tend to do more of a, a point down poke, um, use an old brush so that you don't wreck it or beat it up too much. The Kiki underfoot is trying to get under her blanket again. She got out and then she went back. If she wakes up for good, of course, we'll have to take her out. But I'm hoping she'll settle and stay for the rest of the stream. We're almost there. Such a silly dingo. She's such a silly dingo. But yeah, we're going to work on some structure today. To get her to be a little less dingy, and I'm making sure she gets her naps so that she doesn't get too overtired and too overstimulated. Puppies uh, at this age sleep a lot, so she wasn't, I was pretty sure she was not getting enough sleep when we weren't giving her more crate time, so much as she's like a woo a woo uh, about the crate time, it, it is a necessary evil. It helps with the housebreaking too. She's only had a few accidents, and usually it's when David and I get distracted, so it's our fault, not hers. Um, she's been very good though. Since we have been praising her when she does her business outside. There we go. So we've got that kind of laid in. Now I can grab uh, some more of that base coat color and thin it down. I want to stipple a little bit in. So this is the consistency I'm working with right here. Just kind of like a thick wash almost. Um, and you can absolutely stipple with this. You can stipple with anything. Um, and it'll help me to blend in and break up some of the uh, harder texture that I got. It won't wipe it out because it's really thin to paint, but it should enable me to blend a little bit nicer, make it a little softer. Oh yeah, Texas is totally trying to kill you if you've never been there before. That's what David used to say. He's like, why is your state trying to kill me? Although I have to say, his state gets pretty, we do get pretty hot. We've gotten into the 90s several days this summer. It's just not constant like it is in Texas. No, no man, tomatoes are what's trying to kill me. I can deal with Texas, but tomatoes, no. Lethal to ants. Yeah, I've been looking for a pet sitting service. Sadly, there's, there's a fantastic one in this area, but they are like solid booked. They're trying to hire more people. Um, but they're really cool. They like doing enrichment activities and pack walks with the dogs and stuff. It's very cool. So when Kiki is older, hopefully they'll have openings again. They seem like a great service. There we go, some more stippling to kind of blending. You see how that's blending it in on the top there? So I'm going back to my base coat color, thinning it down, and working in these edges specifically to blend them in just a bit better. Not like many people are going to look at the top of the hat, but you still want to have the texture be consistent. And then we'll 
probably done a little, do a little bit more stippling to, uh, the more stippling you do, if you can't do super fine stippling, like Kirill does super fine stippling, it's insane how fine of a dot he gets. If you can't do that though, just keep layering it on top of each other. Like layer it on, layer it on, go on more, 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 more. If you just build it up, even if you've got bigger stipples, if you're building them up on top of each other, you'll get the variance you want. So that's what I do if, I'm, if I have to move faster and I don't have a lot of time for texture. I will, I'll move fast and maybe I'll get bigger dots and bolder dots, but then I'll glaze and I will build up my texture and then it'll end up looking pretty good. Oh, our hot pepper plant isn't good until the winter, weirdly. I think some peppers are winter plants though, aren't they? Some peppers are more summer. I think the hatch pepper season is now. But we've got these tiny little, we've got a tiny hot pepper bush outside. Yeah, it depends on your winter, yeah. Our winter is very um, mild, so I can see. I can see how peppers would like be more of a, more of a summer, late summer, early fall for you. Our, our winters are weird. I don't know, it does get cold though. I mean, it gets down into the 40s. I don't remember, I think it did hit 39 last year. Especially at night, it goes into the 30s. We do get a rare frost. All right, we're getting this done. This is great. Stipple, stipple, stipple. I'm trying so hard, and I've, I've, and the puppy has made it much more complicated, of course, because we have to make sure that she's getting out and enrichment and uh, getting played with and trained and all this. But I've got so many models that I want to kind of finish up for ReaperCon, just like that we did, but that like I didn't do nice basing on and stuff, and I'm like. Ron would prefer them based, I'm sure, so I'm like, I really am trying, I don't know how much I'm actually going to end up getting done for ReaperCon. I feel like the puppy has stolen half my brain cells. Oh no, you're fine, Quindy. So yeah, um, everybody, uh, stop by and say hi to David at ReaperCon. He's going to be teaching his OSL class and something else, I think. I think it's the um, advanced highlighting and shading. I'm not certain. But, uh, and you can ask him for his puppy horror stories. I think he doesn't believe me when I tell him that this puppy is actually a pretty easy puppy. <laughs> oh yeah, less phone calls for sure, Quindy, yep. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to figure out something really cool to do for uh, the stream on, the kickoff stream on Thursday, guys. So which one do you think I should work on? Do you think I should do the Dragon Bust? Because whatever it is, I have to prep it today. Should I Dragon Bust? Should I do the OSL Warrior Guy? Should I do the Mouseling? Like, what do you guys think? Oh, yeah, with how much rain you get, I bet it is a constant battle against mold and mushrooms, right, Critico? Those are probably not in your greenhouse, though. I'm going to do a little stippling on the side here. Blend it in. If there's not a lot of light coming down, if, this, if the area is kind of perpendicular, 
to the light source, then I might just do a very, very, uh, just a very subtle stipple and not bring it up all the way. Let's just do that. Oh, fungus central here. Yeah. Dragon or elf, huh? We got one vote for mousling. Hey, Quindy, can we do a poll? Let's do which model should Ann paint for the ReaperCon kickoff stream? And the choices will be Elf Lady, like the ghost collar, uh, Mouseling, Dragon Bust. I think those are the ones that, oh, and we've got one for the male warrior with Torch. So let me get those out one second. I'll go grab them. Just want to get that texture started out there. So the models we are choosing from, as I try not to, uh, this is this is the guy with the torch. Hold on. <laughs> so okay, so here's the mouseling, mouseling with torch, mouseling warrior, valiant mouseling warrior, um, Rupercon 2022 mouseling. This is the elf lady, the ghost walker elf lady. This is the warrior with the torch, male warrior, and then the um, the huge dragon box. Where's my huge dragon box? There it is. The um, Reapercon Dragon Bust, this guy. So which one do you want to do? So those are your choices. Male Warrior with Torch, Ghost Walker Lady, Reapercon Mouseling, or Reapercon Dragon Bust. You should all vote. Voting is live. Just started. Quindy's got the poll up. Pull is up. What do I want to paint? I have to think. Hmm. All right, I have voted. We'll watch that. So yes, the the uh, what you want me to paint for the ReaperCon stream on Thursday morning. And that'll be earlier than usual, remember guys. It's going to be uh, an hour earlier. It'll start an hour earlier. I need to get a little bit of color down here. Hour earlier than normal. So mark that on your calendar. It's my la it'll be my last stream of the week too, because after that, ReaperCon will take over in, in full. So uh, my last stream, Thursday will be my Friday, and we'll be starting a little bit early. So remember that. And you'll still you'll still intersect the stream if you get on at the usual time. You'll just have missed part of it. We'll probably uh, I'll base coat the dragon bust if that's the one we want, or the elf lady. Elf lady's winning right now, guys. Elf lady is winning over dragon bust. Impressive. So I'll have to base coat. I'll try to base coat her before the stream. I'll prep her tonight just so that we can just jump in and do fun stuff on her. I have to think about what I want to do. Um, it will end at the uh, a little bit later, I th no, a little bit earlier, because normally it goes till one, I think, and we're gonna do um, a ten thirty to twelve thirty, because uh, the pupper probably won't sleep much beyond that, and I need to right when she really wakes up, I need to take her out because she needs to go out when she wakes up from sleep. So. Uh, Yeah, Elf Lady, Mousling, Warrior Torch Guy all have light sources. This is true. 
Looks like it's gonna be Elf Lady. So I'll have to think about colors. I think I know what I want to do for her though. I've got pretty strong, I looked at her and I had a pretty strong opinion about what I wanted to paint her as. So let's put a little bit of light in there and continue with my stippling back here. Yeah, commanding lead. All right, there we go. Ghost Walker Elf Lady wins. Super. Yeah, I have a good idea of what I want to do for her. I've got a color scheme already in mind. So that's actually pretty good because um, usually when I start out with a strong color scheme in mind, the model goes very well and fast, comes together fast. We've got some felted stuff on there, and I've got to look. There's got to be some more here. Oh, and it's about time for us to wrap up the stream. So let me just get a little bit more stipples here on this uh, area, but then we can back out. We started a little late today, so I can do another five minutes at least. Because the pupper. Pupper delay. Since she woke me up a couple times in the night, I definitely was a little slow on the start this morning. So it was, and David had to run out the door. That meant that I was left with a lot of the dog chores because he had a meeting that he had to make. So he could not, uh, he's been really good about supporting me with the puppy though. He's uh, definitely shouldering his, his share of the work. The other thing I can do with this brush because it is so old, so I can really be really brutalize it. I can smush it if I want to really Bring it in there. Yeah, you can always just catch up with the VOD too, Twisted Oma, if you want to see how it comes together. Yeah. But catching the beginning and the end is also fun, right? Because then you see progress. Maybe we'll do it with wet palette. What do you guys think? Should we uh, preview the wet palette too? Like, I'm willing to do that if you guys want me to. I haven't done a wet palette on a Tiny Mini. Only the troll. So what do you guys think about that? Yes? Okay. Yeah, I know Rhonda was prepping for ReaperCon also. Okay, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll whip out the new wet palette. I'll have to re reconfigure my uh, table here a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's good, it's good, it's good. I'm going to back up here. So I can still see a line. You can see the demarcation line right here. So I am going to actually blend this in better. I'm going to bring in more of my stipples into this area. And actually, I'm going to grab some of my dark color and I'm going to wet blend stipple, which is totally a thing you can do. Wet blend stippling can be a good way to blend in an edge that you have a harder edge on. Can bring the dark back into some of this. And then it'll, it'll fade in very much more readily. There we go, that's better. We're, yep, we're gonna get a nice fade now, that's good. And here, I guess, no, oh, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit more there. Yeah, since Rhonda's bound to be um, ReaperCon prep, I wonder if she is. I know the closer I get to a con, the more my brain is just out the window on everything except prepping for the con. starts to blend in a little bit better. That's a nice blend now. 
So really the only part uh, that I haven't done is actually this little bit right here. Because everything over here is, is somewhat in shadow, but we have a little bit, a little bit of light falling right in here. There we go. Just a little bit of texture. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's kind of mindless, and it really helps if you um, if you're going to do a lot of stippling on a big model like this. It really does help to kind of just put on a podcast or an audiobook or music, depending on how you groove, and uh, just go, just go, just enjoy um, being in your hobby and doing a thing and uh, listen to your happy book and you're all good. That's that's where I really like to get in the zone on texture. I find I do my best work on texture when I've got something else to work on. <laughs> Quindy, <laughs> lol. Um, with Reapercon looming, uh, it's anybody's guess. We could uh, we could take odds on that, but I would I would give that pretty even odds actually. Pretty even odds. Let's do a little bit more texture here. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Now we've got to see that light come down. You can see the texture. That's about right. Wow, that looks good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Happy with that for sure. Just a little bit more. Also, if you want to blend out your stipples, you can just make your stipples further apart. Use your pretty dark color and make them kind of fade out as you go into the shadow. So let's take a look. And we're back. Here we are. Make sure we're in focus. So, looking at that, that's all good. Got our stipple texture. Could do a little bit more in here. There we go. And I've got that light there. I'm going to do just a little bit more back here. This is when I go around the model and make sure that I've done. Oh, Justin, yes, utter chaos for sure. Just going to put a little bit more so that you can see that it's been done. I always do just a touch of highlight. Even if it's a really subtle highlight, always do just a touch, guys, if you're doing competition painting, especially. It's going to make your model look better. Even on a big piece like this, where arguably I could get away with not doing much texture here in the shadow. But just putting a little bit in really helps bring it out. Looks good. Oh, back part of the hat. Yeah, we got a couple minutes. Technically we are a lot in shadow here, but not on this side, so I do want to get some stipples in on this side, and I want to get some stipples in over here. too much of a big blurb. So then if you do a big blurb like that accidentally, grab your base coat color and go right over it. Blend it in. Gonna set up for on a stream yet. Yeah, it's true, right? You're gonna be there no matter what, right, Quindy? Yeah, I think tomorrow, as long as everything stays equal, hopefully the little pupster will sleep through the whole thing. As long as I set her up with her blanket to burrow under. Is my big concern is if Pupster like has a sudden like wants to go out and the last part of the stream goes straight down. 
But yeah, Justin confirmed with me, Quindy, that it will be uh, a pretty much a 10, 10.30 to 12.30, um, you guys' time. Um, with the 12.30 being the transition. So that's two hours. I can do two hours without killing my back. And hopefully the pupper should sleep through the whole thing. That is the hope, anyway. Being a ReaperCon stream, who knows, right? Chaos ensues, because ReaperCon... Part. We need to get this upper part of the hat. There are they? Oh yeah. He doesn't know either. Oh no. Yeah, I bet they're missing Adrian a lot. Adrian just was. Adrian is my kind of girl. She's just so organized. She has the lists. She's like on it. Um, she's always checking in with everything. You know, at uh, like well in advance, which is great. Like, yeah, I like, I love how Adrienne manages her life. That is one organized woman, and I appreciate an organized woman. But you know, it seems to me. I mean, the swag box looks great, so it seems to me like Reapers kind of looks like it should be a good con to me. Like, it looks like they they've got it. Like. Justin would laugh at me if he heard this. We're putting on a good... He'd probably say we're putting on a good show. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, there we go. We've got all our texture in our hat. We could probably put a little bit... Well, no, there's a lot of shadow back here. I don't know, maybe I'll put a tiny bit back here on the back of the hat. Just a little bit here and there. Little tiny, tiny stipples. But yeah, so pretty much I'm trying to get a bunch of my minis done. Might do a couple of other interesting things. Um, might go off rotation this week, guys. Uh, since I've got, I think I'm still doing Wednesday stream, right, Quindy? Because it's not ReaperCon yet, it's just the day before, I would assume. But I've got an, um, an Andy Peeper model for Pathfinder that I need to get done for the con, too. Um, if she's pretty, I might do some freehand on her dress. So I might actually... I'll have to look up her number. But she is a Reaper model, and I do need to finish her. I might do some basing too, just some finish basing on a couple of models. Like I, I need to do a finish base on the Wyvern, and I want to put the Sphinx on a proper black base as well, and do some sand and stuff there. There we go. Okay, good. So that means I've got uh, two more streams. So yeah, we might do some fun variety stuff, guys. Um, heading in. I'm not going to get the basing done on the Celestial Wizard, so we're just going to finish her after the con, I think. Um, we have finished our bust. All I need to do is paint the base black, and then just I'll probably do just one final sweep. I always wait till the end and just do one final sweep to see about rub off or anything I need to touch up. Uh, do sealer. I'll probably seal, um, do a brush on sealer on this model, just to make sure, because it's big. So what do you guys think? Yeah, we painted a bust, guys, on stream, even. Crazy talk, huh? Oh, he's moving, huh? The Alpaca Nation is uh, is re-situating. Re I hear it's all over the place today. Puppy, I blame the puppy. It's all the puppy, man. So yeah, I think it turned out really well, um, I think. We're going to be starting where the centaur was. We're going to be doing this guy um, after ReaperCon. We'll start a new rotation, I think, with our new models. Oh, quinny has got phone. Okay. So, yeah. So, I'll talk about the rotation while she is uh, there. I'm going to replace... I probably should have done the, wa the water guy replacing the, uh, the, the storm chaser pirate. But uh, water guy will replace centaur. And air, air genie guy will replace... Um, 
this, the bust. So we'll be starting brand new models, Elemental Scions, uh, after ReaperCon. And we'll probably just loop it back around. We'll start with this one. And uh, I'm going to be looking at a bunch of those beautiful ReaperCon models that I previewed today for you guys out of the swag bag box um, to paint for, to kind of swap into for the regular rotation. Like we finished Madame, Madame Delia, for example. Um, eventually, probably Big Apple. Eventually, probably. Um, I don't have a replace for Madame Delia. It may just be the Ghost Walker lady because I won't finish her on the ReaperCon stream. Um, so I don't have a replace for her. I also have this guy. He's, um, he's a past ReaperCon model. He's a Blood Wolf, a vampire. I kind of like him. Uh, I may swap him in. He's metal, but he's kind of cool. He's got a sword, too, that he holds across his body. Uh, it's just across the body, so I decided not to do it. But, yeah, we'll be, I mean, but I don't have to do it right away. Like, that's the thing with the ReaperCon models is I can just swap them in over the course of the next several months. And we could do some nice freehand on the back of this guy. He's a blood wolf, so I probably would do a, a wolf uh, design. So I've got him all done. Uh, all prepped, anyway, except for his sword. So he's sitting there saying, hey, maybe you do me. Um, but yeah, and I've got all these ReaperCon models, so. The vampire? Yeah, and I haven't done, other than um, the chibi, Monique, I haven't done a vampire for you guys. So I thought it would be kind of fun. Uh, we could use a, maybe a different skin tone, maybe one of the skin tones in the ReaperCon paint pack. So yeah, that's my plan. That's my plan. Uh, so yeah, so there's a preview of some of the stuff we go on with then, guys. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just get with you, Quindy, when I figure out what I want to paint the, or paint or design or do for basing uh, the models we already have or whatever for the next couple days. Uh, maybe I'll work on the Andy Peeper Pathfinder if I can find the SKU number. And this is the lady we'll be doing on Thursday. Uh, you know, I like metal, but I'm getting more and more annoyed with it, Gibson, because I love how the fact that the plastic doesn't chip um, or rub off nearly as easily as the metal. So, especially with a big slug of metal like that, that Blood Wolf guy, he's like real heavy. So, you know, the edges are going to rub off all the time. So, you're going to have to like fix it all the time. So, one thing, I'm, I, and I think the Bones USA, this, this I think is superior to metal. I'll go out on a limb and I'll say that I'm a longtime metal proponent. But this reminds me so much of resin, and resin is my most loved uh, material just because it's so highly detailed. Um, these Siocast Bones models are just beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, it is a lot of nostalgia for people who really love metal. I know that. I know that. I remember. Do a wolf that looks like Kiki. Well, then I'll have to do it with the fangs out. And the dingo eyes. <laughs> All right, guys. We certainly went late today, but we also started late. So I feel like at least you guys got your time's worth. Um, we've got our bust complete finally. So now it can go to ReaperCon. Um, which is great. I just need to paint that black and I'll probably put a sealer coat on it to make it all nice and uh, finished. All right. And yeah, so the next couple of these will be fun and uh, finishing up bases and just like getting stuff all laid out for ReaperCon. You guys can see all the models that we finished over this year that I'm sending to ReaperCon. Uh, we got, I got a base, the Wyvern as well, Julie's Wyvern. Um, so yeah, and hopefully Rhonda will be on later, but I will, yeah, tiniest pointiest of fangs. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, absolutely. So I hope you guys have fun. And yeah, we'll, we'll be back with maybe a basing stream. Maybe I'll work a little bit on my, uh, my Pathfinder model that I need to get done. And y'all can have a great day. All right? Fantastic. Thanks for hanging out with us. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Quindy, I hope you have a great day too. Bye-bye.